what's up everybody, it's Sue here and welcome to Aeon Arts Tuesday Tips. Today I'm just going to be quickly showing you how to utilize depth maps in Sony Vegas by using parenting and pre-composition. Um, the reason why I'm doing this with pre-composition is because the clips are actually have not been turned into 300 FPS yet, they're still in their 60 FPS state and you'll see why that's the case uh, in a bit. But for now, we're just going to jump right in. What you need to do this, um, obviously you need your depth map, which you're looking at right now in this red or whatever. And what you also need is your normal um, version of your clip, which you're seeing here. Now if you're using reshade, uh, your depth map will be black and white. And if you record it, the in-game depth buffer, uh, using just the game engine itself, it will be red. So do not be concerned about the fact that your uh, depth map has a different color because we're going to be turning this into black and white anyways. Um, so first thing you want to do is line up the clips together. Uh, so what I like to do usually is just take the opacity down to about halfway and then put the clip under it and just drag to the, the point that I want it to start. So let's say we want it to start where he's running. Uh, we're just going to drag the clip under it until it matches the frame <laughs> one by one and you'll notice when it matches it will have any like ghosting type of effect that it's got going right now it will just be completely uh, solid so I think that's pretty much lined up we're going to just check by clicking a different frame um, something like a doorway helps because you can clearly clearly see if it's ghosting on a doorway or not and so far it looks like I've lined it up one time uh, so let's just create subclips for this so that they start at the exact same point and we can line them up extremely easy um, so yeah right now you should be at two clips completely lined up one depth map one normal and with the depth map on top and if you are using the in-game depth buffer then you want to just turn your depth map into black and white I did this to um, depth maps even if they're already in black and white anyways because sometimes they have a slight blue tint or something and that's not what you want so um, after you turn your depth map into black and white you pretty much just want to make the bottom clip into a parent and then change the parent tracks compositing mode into cut and that's going to turn your clip completely black which is normal like do not panic um, what cut compositing does is use your color information to cut out the black in an image and if you're not using something like well we use chroma key to control it in this case and it pretty much separates you know the black and white or whatever and you can control your depth values from there the steps of focus if you're using uh, it for depth of field or whatever so turn your color that you're chroma keying out into black and turn your lower threshold just to you know to the top or whatever and yeah as you can see um, you have control over your depth values now what high threshold does is change the amount that uh, your depth steps are blurred so if I change the high threshold to zero and then change the low threshold down you'll see that it's like a rigid just straight edge um, when I change the steps uh, and when I put the depth the threshold the high threshold up to uh, one uh, it's blurred as I change the low threshold so to cover this into layman's terms uh, the low threshold controls the steps of depth and the high threshold controls how much the steps are blurred between each other kinda like using masks and feathering um, so what I like to do usually is turn the high threshold to about 7, 8 and, and it gives you a nice blur when you usually come towards like more closer to the camera um, right so now you see you've got your depth values control you know and pretty much you just got a blank black background and you can do all kinds of things like let's say we want to just throw like a checkerboard uh, pattern behind the clip bam there it is kind of thing and it's a clean you know clean depth 
you know, if you turn the low threshold, you just have absolute control pretty much. Um, with the color, if you turn it into white, it changes the amount that the near blur is affected. So black is equal to far blur control and white is equal to near blur control. Gray is kind of a middle ground and then you can just kind of adjust both at the same time. So if you was going for something like a tilt shift effect, you'd use gray. And of course, you know, balance that if you're high and low threshold and you get a blur between those. So I'm just going to turn it back to black and put my threshold back up to about here and my low to about here for some blur. Right. Now, if you want uh, depth of field, pretty much what you do is you take your clip, your normal clip, and you just drag it under. And then, like, if you was going for Call of Duty style blur, you'd use um, Gaussian blur. So this is like classic, you know, Code 4 looking motion blur. I mean, not motion blur. Um, depth of field blur. It's just Gaussian. Uh, if you was going for the more like bokeh style, you can use BCC lens blur, or you can get a reshade style blur by using min max, uh, just default Sony Vegas min max. So as you can see here, it gives it, you know, a bit of a, uh, a like a shimmer to it. Uh, it's kind of poppy. Maybe we can make it extreme or whatnot. But I just like to take it to like 140, 150. So yeah. Um, that's how you utilize, you know, uh, depth mats to create depth of field in Vegas. Now, as I was saying earlier in the beginning of the tutorial, you can apply this two ways in the edit because as you see here, all we've got now is a uh, lined up and made depth mat, but we don't have, um, you know, we don't have 300 FPS to edit to. So what you can do is you can render this out, or you can save it as a file, and then let's say you go back to your edit. I'm just going to create a new project, but let's say this is your edit, and you want to just get the project file that you just saved with your depth map created or whatever, and then you want to drag it in and because it's a 60 fps project file and the clips are 60 fps if you put the playback rate to times 4 or just 4 um, it makes it so that the clips are effectively 300 fps and then you can veil them uh, like normal so yeah that's how you use death maps in Sony Vegas uh, you can do all kinds of things with this. You can keyframe the depth values. Um, you know, it's this is just on a cinematic, but on a clip, it's got even more endless possibilities. Like you can isolate the gun and have depth on the gun. You can change the color of your backgrounds, like what I did in H57. You know, you can have some sort of kind of dimension warp going on, RGB split. Um, it's all up to really your imagination and. You know, it's just a very useful effect to know how to do. So, yeah. Thank you for watching uh, <laughs> this week's Tuesday Tips. Uh, please comment or like if you have a suggestion. Or if you even know a way to do this better, you know, free way, feel free to, you know, say so in the comments. Because, you know, the more ways the better. We're trying to build up the community with this series and stuff. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, talk to you later.